Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cutforth. Good evening. Hi. Howdy. This week, we're talking about evanescent embryos and battling babies. But first, Patreon. We want to thank all of our patrons for voting for this episode. And also, you know, just for generally being patrons. Because they submitted this episode as well. And if you join our Aww. Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash guys, you can get a number of very cool things. Like bonus episodes, an entire new podcast called Sci Guys After Dark, which is released monthly, along with... A few other perks as well. And a question for everyone. If you are watching on YouTube, head down to the comments. If you're not watching on YouTube, you're listening elsewhere, head to YouTube and get to the comments. The question is, do you have any siblings? Do you have any siblings? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> we actually got to answer it this week. Yeah. We were allowed. Yeah. Because we changed the, we changed the format a little bit. We Did changed we? the intro. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So now we're allowed to answer. As I said, though, this month our patrons voted for Vanishing Twin Syndrome, which is a condition that sounds a lot more mystical than it actually is. Is it where one sibling's a magician and they make the other one vanish? Very Jan, rare. Did you... You're, that's the prestige. Oh, uh, <gasps> it is. Oh. That's, is that's that, just, are we talking about the prestige? No, 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 no. Vanishing Twin Syndrome mm. is very different. Okay. <laughs> Christopher Nolan didn't direct this one. Oh. Um, and while I said it's, it's, not, it's not as mystical as it sounds, it is very, very interesting. So what, what do you think Vanishing Twin Syndrome is? Is it uh, where there's a, there's something where like one baby absorbs the other baby and then that baby sort of lives inside the now grown up baby? Gobble, that is one. Mm, that is up. one. <laughs> that is, okay. Yeah. yeah. Eating a baby. No, yeah. That is one um, way for it to happen. We'll okay. get into it a little bit uh, later. I think first we should probably talk about twins. Go you know on, what okay. twins are? Which type? Wow. There's two, ty yeah, there's there's two types. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, tell me. What are the two types? There's fraternal, which I forgot which one that is. And there's... It's going to become very obvious when you remember the second one. It's identical, is yeah. it? Okay, I, was, I wasn't sure if there was like a, a fancy name for it. You know, identical and fraternal twins. So identical is usually one, is it one egg that's split into two eggs? Yeah, so one uh, so one uh, zygote, one fertilized egg, yeah. uh, then splits into um, what, two, two, two identical sort of, eggs. Um, yeah. Two, zy so two zygotes, yeah, yeah. two uh, identical. And so they come out looking identical. They come out looking the same. Whereas fraternal is when two eggs are released and they're both fertilized, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, spot on. Good. There go. Yeah, so um, there's there are some sort of quirks with this. So um, as I as you said, identical twins um, are monozygotic twins, which mm -hmm. means... As you said, Jamp. That's exactly what I said, word for word. <laughs> which Please cite your source. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the, yeah, as you said, the identical egg splits into two and making two identical twin babies. Now, somewhere that you read this, some places that you read this will say that those twins are always the same sex. No. no um, really? Why well, not? Yeah, identical. Identical twins. Yeah, yeah. Surely they must Are they be always the same sex? sex? Oh, no. Because the, 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 the sperm carries a Y. And the Y can can go into one, but not the other. No, 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 no. Is that not how it works? Are there environmental factors which then later determine sex? There are some chances of genetic abnormalities which would result in a different sex assigned. At oh, birth. oh, this is like an intersex thing. Wow. Yeah. So X O. Um. So right. like, if there if there's a problem that occurs with the well, kind of yeah. Well, not necessarily the sperm not going into mm -hmm. the egg, but if there's a problem that occurs with the the Y chromosome and its activation, um have problems there uh the sry gene there could be problems there like it's, it's not all in your genetics obviously there are, mm. there are external factors in there and the each um and, and and yeah so each sort of egg uh or each sort of uh fertilized egg could have slight slight changes which uh, happen very early which result in a, in a different apparent sex do so they you have oh. an intersex it's, it's incredibly it, this is incredibly incredibly uncommon yeah like most yeah. people will not if you say um they're always the same sex you'll be right in enough cases that people will not like I, i'm pretty sure it said they were always the yeah. same sex generally um, true on the nhs website I, I think that's what it said like yeah generally it's true yeah but there are some like sort of fringe cases where one yeah. a child is intersex and the other one isn't it's will they also then be non-identical identical twins I mean, identical twins aren't identical. Though. Okay. You know, in that, so genetically they're identical. Yeah. Um, when they're born, uh, but there there are so many environmental factors, right? You guys ever come across mirror twins? No. So I, when I was growing up, I had some friends, Sophie and Charlotte, and they were mirror twins. What's that? It means that if you look at them in the mirror, they look like each other. That's weird. Ew. It's really interesting. It's really Wait, weird. In what ways? Does so they were like... identical twins, right. but they were identical twins that, I don't know the specifics, but basically the specifics ended up that 
they were almost like mirror image twins. They were like the left side of one. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't be able to give you specifics. I'd be postulating. Right. But basically, if you looked in the mirror, once you got to know them and you can, you can actually tell them apart, if you looked in the mirror, they looked like the other one. Oh, that's so Weirdly, weird. it was more... It was slightly more on one of them than the other. So right. on one of them, they looked exactly like the other one did in the mirror. Yeah. And the other one looked kind of like the other one did oh, in wow. the mirror. Oh, wow. Weird. So um, I just want to be totally clear that I, I don't fully trust the website that I am getting this from. It is twins.org.au. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how reputable that is. Um, <laughs> don't trust them. <laughs> but... Um, it says mirror image is an identical uh, is a type of identical twinning. It can happen in any type of identical twins. Uh, when the split occurs late, more than a week after conception, the twins can develop reverse asymmetric features. This term is not really a type of twin, just a way to describe physical features. Um, oh, that's interesting. So twins that split later than this can result in conjoined twins. So it seems that what happens is that um, if the split happens quite a while after mm. words, um, they they then they are then sort of they're identical, but the mirror image of each other just based on the way that sort of bodies develop yeah mm -hmm. that's very interesting that's yeah. that's very cool it's really cool um so here's some features that just just off just off of this website and uh, this will be linked in the description as well um the major characteristics of mirrored image twins that they usually have is that they usually have opposite features such as hair whorls left and right handedness um the same eye condition in opposite eyes opposite teeth eruption oh wow uh some mirror image twins cross their legs opposite to each other and in extreme cases cases twins can even have reversed organs um, that's interesting. That's very that interesting. So uh, do you know what I'll do? I'll double check this uh, before this episode goes out just to make sure that this is all uh, solid. If I don't double check it, then you tell me that I'm tell me that I'm wrong in the comments, yeah. please. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, that's really interesting. Wow, cool. Yeah, that is it. I've never heard of that before. No, I hadn't either. That's. I mean, it makes it's one of those things that um, it doesn't shake my worldview. You know, <laughs> it 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 makes complete sense, mm. and I had all the pieces there to understand that this is probably a thing. I just never had never considered it. Yeah, which is one of my one of my favorite kinds of things to learn. You know, mm. where you're like, oh wow, I could have figured I could have figured this one out, and that's really cool. That's nice. Yeah. So identical twins. Um, as I've said, one egg because uh, splits into two after <laughs> after fertilization. Um, and that was the issue with my logic. Yeah. Because I said it's like two sperms going into the split egg, but yeah, it's fertilized and then it splits. Yeah, it's, that's why right. they're identical because the that, two yeah. sperm aren't going to be identical. Yeah, you know, yeah. and two sperm going into um, different eggs yeah. is uh, would result in fraternal twins. Yes. Um, so, um, in this case, um, as we said, they're almost always the same sex, uh, but seventy percent of um, identical twins uh, might end up sharing a single placenta, which is really cool. You know, I think. Yeah. Um, so, like, most of them end up sharing a placenta. I think they. I don't think they tend to share an amniotic sac. Weird. Yeah. Um. And we don't know what causes um identical twins. Like, we 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 have some ideas of um uh like we have some ideas of sort of like we know actually no we don't have ideas of risk factors or anything. Mm. Uh, I say risk factors as though an identical twin is a bad thing. But they don't run in families. Um. And everyone has the same chance of having an identical twin, which is about one in two hundred fifty. They don't. I'd always I was heard shocked that they that there was a genetic element and it did run in families. That's so interesting. So twins can run in families. Right. Identical twins don't. Ah. Okay. And the reasoning that I have um sort of uh hypothesized for this, I mean, as in I didn't I didn't bother to look into it because it wasn't super relevant to today's episode. The reason I, I, I thought this this might be the case is that when you look at non-identical twins, it makes sense as to why that would run in families. But identical twins seems to be an issue just with um the uh the the, the, the splitting of the egg. Oh, right. the, sorry, the, sorry, the, the the dividing of the, the sort of um, fertilized egg cell, right? Yeah. Like there's there's uh, something that goes wrong there and that results in a, 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 the splitting going wrong and it's splitting into two different um, individual sort of organisms. Absolutely, but you could hypothesize of some m mutation in, it's in certain genomes that makes that splitting going, quote, wrong slightly more likely. Yeah, absolutely. But, but that's not the case. Yeah, no, that's, that's not the case. Yeah. Like, and um, yeah, I mean, the... It happens it, again. It happens very, very, very early as well. So it, it makes sense. I mean, those are very, very key, um, uh, very, very key genes. And you could imagine that mutations in those genes uh, could just result in uh, a pregnancy not being viable, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So, like, because it's genes to do with it, it's, it's one of those things where there needs to be a, something going wrong, just enough 
for them to both survive, but not yeah. so much, <laughs> right? Yeah, that <laughs> um, it breaks everything. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. right? And that's a really that's a really fine line to walk, uh, genetically speaking. So uh, are identical twins more likely to miscarry then? No, 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 no. That is not at all what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying that, like, clearly there is an issue. Um, clearly there is something that happens uh, sort of early in the pregnancy that results in the sort of fertilized egg splitting. Mm. We, have, we don't really know necessarily what that is. Mm. Um, all I'm saying is that uh, for sort of... Um, for uh, mutations that happen at that point in pregnancy, I think that the case is such that, you know, you if there's too much of a mutation that happens very, very early, that could result in just the pregnancy being non-viable. So that's identical twins. As I said, everyone has the same chance, one in 250. But non-identical twins, those are two separate eggs that are fertilized and then implanted into the womb. So they're fertilized by different sperm, obviously, and they're just two eggs uh, that are probably released at the same time. Um, and those two identical twins are no more alike than any other two siblings. If you think about it, it's just they just shared the womb at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there are some factors that um, increase the likelihood of non-identical twins. So uh, in some ethnic groups, uh, like uh, Nigerians, there is a high rate um, and it's much lower among Japanese people. Um, mm. And if you're pregnant in over 35, you're much more likely to have non-identical twins because you're more likely to release more than one egg during ovulation. Ah. Wow. Any reason for that? Uh, it's when when just, you are. Well, this is what they call advanced maternal age, which I hate because 35 just feels <laughs> like too young to to say like advanced old. no yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's it, it it I mean I know there's before someone's in the comments saying, "Oh, but this data and that data." Yeah, I I I know. It just, it seems an odd way to phrase that. It seems like something, and I'm not saying I know this for, for a fact, it seems like something that was come up with by a man. <laughs> yeah, it sure To describe, it sure does. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a little insensitive. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. It's a little insensitive. Yeah. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so um, if you're pregnant over 35, uh, you're more likely to have, uh, because, uh, just because uh, after, I uh, sort of, uh, generally as you age, um, that that sort of um, those processes uh, kind of change, I guess not change, mm. but they're like you know the ability of your body to uh, do all of those processes entirely correctly mm. um, can kind of change. I mean, that, you know, at, at some point you go through menopause and your body changes like you know, hormonally quite a lot. You yeah. stop going through all that stuff, um, and there's sort of I think like it's that sort of thing that like, having a decrease in um, what's the word fertility as you age, mm. you know. I, I, there's these different factors. It's kind of just aging, really. I I aging affects multiple systems in your body. It could also potentially be an advantage, though, if you are if you are reaching the point at which you won't be able to have any more children, um, and this pregnancy is like the one that you're oh. going to be able to have. You can you can make two. I think you're spot on, actually. Um, that's uh, I think I I I think I've read that somewhere. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a, that's an idea for that. And that yeah. also might mitigate against the risk factors, or uh, potentially on an evolutionary basis. Met um, uh, get rid of some of the risk factors of having babies older because then you have twice the chance that you have a viable baby or a baby that's not born with something that you yeah. don't quote want it to have. Yeah, I mean, that makes, yeah, yeah I, I, that, that makes sense. It's a very good idea. Thanks. Yeah. I'll, so, I'll, I'll do a study. Should write it down. <laughs> <laughs> and also non-identical twins can run in the mother's side of the family probably because of an inherited tendency to release more than one egg, it says there. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So okay. if uh, if you if on sort of your mother's side there are a lot of identical twins, there's probably something that is inherited, something probably a genetic that results in uh, you know more chance of just releasing two eggs at once. Yeah. Mm. Which makes which makes a lot of sense. Whereas um, identical twins, there's not that sort of chance. It's it's really weird. It's really interesting. It's it's strange yeah. that like. Okay, what I find interesting is that we call twins twins, despite the fact that there are different ways of becoming twins, and they're both very, very different. Yeah. And also, non-identical twins are just siblings born at the same time. Exactly, they're not yeah. twins. And it, it <laughs> I mean, it results, no, but it results, in, it does result in a different experience growing up, obviously, and, yes, and all of, of course, that. Yes. But um, oh, yeah, so vastly different culturally yeah. twins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But our culture, our, because there's not really been um, uh, a surefire way of determining whether uh, twins are. Um, sort of uh, uh, monozygotic or dizygotic, um, you know, up until the point where we we're able to actually oh, look at. Really? Yeah, well, like thing, if you think about wow. it, you can't necessarily tell if yeah. two two uh, babies are genetically identical mm -hmm. um, yeah. until you're able to test that sort of thing. I mean, you could wait till they're growing up and oh, they look similar, or oh, there are different sexes. So, like, or you could do a genetic test at birth. Mm. Yeah, but I'm saying before can you get, tests, yeah, can you get cells from a developing? You could, you can get cells from a developing fetus whilst it's in the womb. I, I mean, think. 
yeah, yeah. If you wanted to, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. When I say when I'm saying when you're when you're asking that question, the standardized pregnancy pipeline. There's not a way of knowing. (laughs) Yeah. What I mean is that no. What I mean is that up until like a certain point in history, there was no way of knowing. Oh. So after long after we come up with the the term twins and all of that, they were fundamentally the same thing. But now we look at it, and actually, there's two different ways of becoming twins, and one of them is way less interesting than the other. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's such an interesting thing about like just lived life experience of, that is shared between both types of mm-hmm. twins of like just having a person who's this looks like you don't necessarily know what you look like, but they are the same rough size as you. They're probably in the same like bed as you when you're growing up. You can keep each other warm. Like it's a really interesting thing. That's like a totally different life to being a baby on your own, where you are ultimately at points in your day mm-hmm. left on your own. And mm-hmm. secluded from other people. Well, that might not happen if you're um, twins. You have a friend for life, essentially. It's lovely. Yeah. You're related. To, it's, yeah. it's 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 and there's not a there's not necessarily an inherent power dynamic as there is in almost every other relationship because I don't know, man. You never seen the cramp twins? <laughs> yeah, but they're uh, they're not identical twins. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. But my that's what that's my point. Where like, there's not necessarily an inherent power dynamic in yeah. terms of uh, with with other siblings, yeah. there's age, and age uh, results in a hierarchy, yeah. which results in that power dynamic. You yeah. and not necessarily a bad power dynamic. You know, an older sibling can be a a caring figure, which is really good. Yeah. But in terms of twins, you are sort of almost necessarily um, on a level playing field. Yeah, which yeah. is incredibly interesting. Same age, same experiences at the same time, and you generally look the same yeah. as well. Yeah, you know. Yeah, which you know when you know when twins grow up and the, the, you get you get to the point where there's one good looking twin and one twin that's slightly less uh, good looking. Yeah. Oh, that's that to me yeah. seems horrifying. Yeah, because like the the worst. Like, okay, sometimes I can think about okay, what would I look like at my best? I would hate to have someone that is that is just what I could look like at my best. Like genetically speaking, like. <laughs> oh, the, I know the only difference between us is yeah. the fact that I'm not doing what you're doing. Oh, gosh, that's horrifying. They got all the good genes. Yeah, so. but I feel you could also just project all of the things you don't like onto your twin so that your twin always looks better to you anyway, even if there's yeah, true. no objective difference between yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> they could do that back to you without you knowing. Yeah. yeah. Oh. You both think you're the ugly twin. Yeah. So those are twins. Vanishing twin syndrome is understandably one of twin vanishes and luke you said it's when a twin is absorbed but that's not necessarily always the case there are other things that can happen to the twin ultimately the kind of actual definition of vanishing twin syndrome is a phenomenon wherein a multi-fetus pregnancy becomes a single fetus pregnancy or uh, i suppose just a pregnancy with fewer fetuses if you've got you know triplets down to doublets twins doublets <laughs> 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 doublets is an objectively better name than twins. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, doublets yeah. should be what it's called when they're not identical. Oh my god, yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Twins oh. and doublets. Twins and doublets. Ooh, what will it be? <laughs> we will find out when it grows up. Is it a twin <laughs> or a doublet? Well, what would you call identical triplets? Uh oh. Oh my god, what if there's no, oh, but then you'd have to but the, okay, so it depends, right? A- identical triplets are just triplets. If they're non-identical and it's a doublet yeah. and a and another one, then that's just a doublet. That's and a triplet. A, a doublet and a friend. No, oh, wait. Because oh, they're not. Because triplets okay. are identical. This triplets is okay. are identical. Yeah. We are getting off track here. I'm just going to bring us back in. Um, Twins and third wheel. <laughs> 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 you're right, you're uninvited. Why are you here? So Fair. how common do you think vanishing twin syndrome is? I would say deceptively common. More common oh, than I was one would say, expect. I was going to say really, really uncommon. Well, that is, yes. I suppose it's somewhere between. We've covered the range of possibilities there. (laughs) Other than if if it happens every time, or if it never happens, or if it's exactly as common as common as one would expect. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, yeah, yeah, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) So, how common? Give me, give me a percentage number on um, on. How about this? On uh, twin pregnancies, let's say. On twin pregnancies. Yeah, so um, on pregnancies with, mm. with twins. Even if, if, so are you including in that? No, no, as in pregnancies that start off as being twins. So start off any pregnancy where two, there are two potential yes. uh, children. Two two children two, that are two, seen, yeah. so seen at sort of, I think ultrasound would be. Oh, uh, so Di- that's, diagnosed that's, two children. that's kind of the point I'm making is that I think that you could, it's possible yeah, well, that the, you get to yeah. ultrasound and you've already lost one and that would be a vanishing twin syndrome, but they're so small that you never knew. But it, yeah, but you wouldn't. It, it's unmeasurable, essentially, right? Yeah, doesn't yeah. mean it's not happening. Okay, cool. Okay, 
Well, I like to. Fallen soldiers. Okay, fine. I see. Okay, how common oh. do you think it is based on the? How common do you think it is based on the caveat that we need to be able to bloody measure it, Luke? Okay, well then, exactly as common as people would think if they were informed on the answer already. Thank you. Give me a number, please. Uh, I would say Jesus of Christ. twins. Yes. Uh, five percent. Oh wow! Ooh, I was going to say about one percent. Oh wow, that's interesting. Thirty-six percent. What? Oh, mm-hmm. oh my god! So twins are like super high for miscarriage. Is that, is that oh, a type miscarriage. of miscarriage? Doesn't, doesn't, no, not miscarriage. Where are they um, going? So, well, we'll find out in a sec. Uh, uh, okay. 50% well, of... Why is it not a miscarriage? You don't get the baby, ultimately. You still get a baby. Yeah, but you don't get two. Yeah, but that's not that's not a miscarriage, necessarily. Well, look, we'll... Isn't we'll, it? We'll, let's just put a pin in it. Okay. We'll get to it in a sec. Yeah. Okay? I Trust me, it's fine. Don't worry. Okay. So 50% of pregnancies with three or more gestational sacs. Now, a gestational sac, I looked this up. Um, having a baby so gross. What do you think, what do you think a gestational uh, sac is? Uh, uh, is it like the clump of cells before it has formed, like become a form? As far as I'm aware, a gestational sac is just that sort of first, um, it's the first sign of pregnancy that can be seen on, on an ultrasound uh, from about 4.5 to 5 weeks. It's that kind of little, little it's this little space oh. where you're going to gestate. That's it. Obviously, every time I look at an ultrasound, I do not know what I'm looking at. Really? Yeah. What well, think... if it's a baby? Uh, sometimes I can see the shape of the head and like. Oh, you mean this for real? Oh, you I look at an ultrasound, you don't know what you're looking I'm at. I'm like, cool. Hold on. Are you. What? Really? If it's like a fully formed baby, yeah. I'm like, okay, I can see the shape of the baby. Uh, all I'm saying is but most of the ultrasounds you'll have seen will have been a lot of of people, mostly formed babies. A lot, oh no, a lot of people announce their pregnancies with pictures of ultrasounds, uh, and I'm like, that's just black and white blobs. You can see a... That's a side baby. Side on baby. It's like a... Oh, kind of there, but it doesn't... Yeah. It's almost like a cross-section of the baby. see some little flippers. Yeah. See the shape of a head. I mean, like I don't a little, know. Little kidney bean. But that is a very, that's a very high definition ultrasound. That says early pregnancy ultrasound. It's high definition. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean. You just, what you're telling us is you don't know what you're looking at because you've been looking at poor quality pictures. Probably, I will yeah. say a lot of the ultrasounds that people post, the first ones they, they post. And that's probably budgets. what I'm looking at. Yeah. I mean, when I got an ultrasound, I got to look at my own bladder. Um, and I'll tell you, I've got a good looking bladder. Is there a baby in it? Mm, no. Well, it might because Jamp wouldn't know the difference between an ultrasound of a bladder and an ultrasound <laughs> of a baby. You could show me that and I'd be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when are you do? Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> well, they actually, they, they did it before and after I peed. So I got, oh. to, see, I got to see my bladder when it was full, pregnant and with I'd be urine. Like, <laughs> it was vanishing wee syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have it. <laughs> Where did it go? Yeah, you know, sometimes I, during recording these episodes, I realize, wow, people that think we are too silly really, really have a point. Yes. You yeah. Know? Well, really, I don't care. Yeah, we're very silly. You know, that's the point. Silly but is too relative. Silly. But, no. And it's, you know, if you're boring, then yeah. then it's relative to how boring you are. <laughs> to a silly person, we're very serious. <laughs> yeah. So, um, as I said, 50% of pregnancies with three or more gestational sacs. Um, so uh, that could result in three or more um, babies, babies. Uh, that fifty percent of them re- result in sort of uh, a sort of vanishing fetus, or have a vanishing fetus. Thirty six percent of twin pregnancies and twenty to thirty percent of pregnancies uh, achieved through uh, some sort of aided reprodu- reproduction or fertility treatment. Why do you think that is? So it's less common. So it's less. It's less common in like IVF and stuff. Yeah. It, in, like no, no, it, it, okay. So it's it's in IVF. It is very common. Oh, it's very common. It's Twenty to thirty percent. That's still. It's less common than in 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 a, in a pregnancy with, um, sort of with three potential right. um, uh, sort of because a gestational sac doesn't necessarily mean a fetus is going to grow, right? Yeah. But um, it's it, it, it it's you know um it, it was three or more, and then with two, it's thirty six percent of twin pregnancies. But why do you think so many IVF? Because okay, you're looking at it based on the on twins, right? Yeah. This isn't just oh, this is, of this is all of all pregnancies. Of all IVF it will vanish. So it's twenty to thirty percent of all pregnancies that are achieved through assistive reproductive techniques. Yeah. Yes. So is it because they haven't implanted onto the lining? I think you're... Okay. So the reason that it's that is because they implant the multiple fetuses so often. Yeah. And oh, so you have a higher chance. You have a higher, way higher chance. Right. Yeah. Because okay. like, think about it. The like 20 to 30% of... It, it, it's lower than twins, right? Yeah. But yeah. I, that's all, of all IVF. Not like not all IVF result um, results in twins. No. You know? Yeah. Usually fact, you're implanting more than two with IVF as well. Yeah. Yeah. You, inf- you uh, I don't know the the exact specifics on IVF or other um like you know reproductive techniques, but the the point is that they they basically throw a bunch of bunch of um, a bunch of eggs at the wall, see what sticks. Literally. Oh yeah. God, yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, 
Um, you said that it would result in miscarriage, which... So miscarriage will have a definition of being after a certain time. I'm a imagining. loss of the pregnancy uh, during the first 23 weeks. Um, now, the, the chances of survival of the, of the other twin are really, really good if it occurs during the first trimester of pregnancy. So in the, the split, yeah. So no, no. So if the if the um if the vanishing. Oh, okay. So the other twin will be fine. Yeah. More often than not, if it's in the first trimester. So if it's early in pregnancy and the other twin is is, is you know, disappears. Yeah. Then the remaining twin, probably gonna be fine. Okay. Right. Um. So again, you wouldn't really call it a miscarriage because you're not really losing the pregnancy, right? It's just disappeared. It, you, you, it's just changing from a multi fetus pregnancy to. It, it right. could be. It could be like it, 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 this. Is where the definition of yeah. the of the term miscarriage becomes a bit murky. Like there are there are some instances of vanishing twins where in a, where in which I would consider it a miscarriage. Yeah. But other ones, I I wouldn't because it's it's not really an issue in sort of carrying. The, it's just been reabsorbed, and you still have a viable mm. twin, a viable it, child. It, yeah, sure. But that's quite clinical description. I think I feel like the experience of miscarriage is so characterized. It's not about you know the literal like objective thing that's going on it's about the mourning of the thing that could have been and if you've got twins and one of them has vanished mm. and you're mourning a, a life you could have had um and that on an emotional level is you know it doesn't matter what the definition is if you were expecting one thing and another thing happened and that's quite a large thing to change that you know in a more like less precise medical sense that feels like a miscarriage to yeah me. Mm. yeah i mean i suppose it kind of is a miscarriage then i just i, I mean it, i don't think it's always necessarily thought of as a miscarriage you know especially you still get a baby you still yeah you know i mean there's still like a there's a still a positive element to it i mean right I, what is from what i've seen people could be obviously very upset but this which makes complete sense mm. but i don't think that's always necessarily the case you mm. know because again as 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 you said there's still a child coming out of it, you know? Yeah. So it's like one twin needs the, one yes. twin needs the other. You still become a parent. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So you, yeah. there's, it's, your life is changed, but marginally compared to the change of a miscarriage with no uh, yeah. viable the feeling of going through all that pain and then getting nothing at the end. Yeah, and that's not to sort of, um, that's not to uh, belittle the, the, the sort of difficulty that people would go through with um, vanishing twin syndrome. That's just to say that it is, it is different in the, in the outcome often. Yeah. Yes. If if you do if you do because vanishing twin syndrome could result in um in issues for the mother um or you know the parent and the um and the remaining in the remaining sort of fetus uh if it if it happens uh in the second or third trimester but if that happens generally uh, the doctor that is working with you will just keep an eye on you and there's you you you've got to be monitored more closely because there could be other complications and in fact the vanishing of said twin could be due to um yeah. other factors. That's what I was going to ask you actually is that is is the vanishing of the twin in the later stages is that actually is the 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 act of vanishing or whatever has happened to the twin um is going to cause trouble for the other baby or is it that a a child a, a fetus vanishing at such a late stage is potentially indicative of other issues that are going to also affect the other twin? Um I think both. You think both. Okay. I, th I think both yeah i'm gonna be honest i researched this a little while ago so yeah. i answer that question off the top of my head um I, I feel like i think both uh yeah cool so the causes of this well actually first let's talk about how they sort of um what the signs are and how they sort of diagnose it and then we can get into the causes so uh this is i mean how do you think they sort of diagnose vanishing twin syndrome like how do you think they i've kind of already hinted at it ultrasound you, yeah one's gone yeah you see two and then you don't see two anymore yeah. exactly so they do literally vanish it's not that yeah. it's not that um one fetus stops growing and then you have to pass it it's that they've vanished i think in some cases you might have to pass it but that's um, what i was wondering is that vanishing twin syndrome it may be as a misnomer because unless they literally always it's only applied to literal vanishing well i think twins. that i mean i think that, i mean okay when i say i think that sometimes a, a one could die and you'd have to pass that then yes uh i think that does happen but i don't think that falls under vanishing twin syndrome yeah. right because vanishing twin syndrome is uh the situation wherein one of them uh sort of a multi-fetus pregnancy yeah. turns into a, 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 a loses at least one of the fetuses you know mm. and reduces to you know, maybe a single fetus pregnancy or yeah. another multi-fetus pregnancy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, 
the that's how they diagnose it. Yeah, with um with ultrasound, and it's interesting though because it means that it's a relatively new thing that we mm. know about, right? Vanishing twin syndrome is something that, of course, we could have known about it for a while, but it would have been harder to explicitly show it because you can't look inside unless you, you know chop them open, mm. or I guess go in from. Never mind. Uh, so <laughs> ultrasound made it a lot easier to sort of diagnose this, um and. Um, the most common sort of sign of it uh, when trying to diagnose is vaginal bleeding or spotting, um, cramps or pel pelvic pain, um, which is basically the same as uh, uh, any other miscarriage. Um, so, as I've said, usually this happens um, when the mother is over sort of 30, 35 years old. So when that happens, I mean, realistically, when you're looking at pregnancies at that age, they tend to, um, there tends to be slightly more complications. So you there is slightly more monitoring with that as well. Mm. Um, and if if you've obviously conceived through um, sort of assisted reproductive techniques, then they're obviously going to monitor you for that as well because usually the reason you've done that is because you've had issues with conception um, and then further complications can then happen, all of that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, the main way of diagnosing is literally just looking at an ultrasound and, um, and just seeing what's going on. Um, the, so what do you think causes... Uh, vanishing twin syndrome. Just well, there's obviously the first one that I mentioned, which I know is one specific case. So th where... That's not so much a cause. That's just, that's. Oh outcome. right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm well... talking. I'm talking. What would cause the the twin to vanish? As in, what would uh, not like? Where does it go? But why does it? Why does it do that? Why does it disappear? Why does it do the thing I talked about about yeah. being absorbed by the other fetus? Yeah. Um, oh, I have no idea. Proximity, like it's too close. There aren't. So there isn't something dividing them. We actually don't know. Um, we actually don't know the exact cause of cool. why well, uh, vanishing cool. twin syndrome ha happens. Um, but there are risk factors. So obviously chromosomal abnormalities, um, the mother being 30, like over 30. Basically, mm. uh, from over what I can 30? see. Yeah, uh, over 30, over 35. Yeah. Okay, right. I mean, it, obviously it increases over the age of 30. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it depends. It also increases at the age of 35. It depends where you want to yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, slice that. But the, from what I can gather, it seems to be that ultimately if you're at higher risk for miscarriage, then if you have a sort of twin pregnancy, um, then there's a slightly, there'd be a higher risk of sort of miscarrying one. Yeah. Uh, but then it disappears basically due to how bodies work, which we'll get into in a sec. Uh, but other risk factors are, um, as I said, uh, reproductive techniques or assisted reproductive techniques, um, uh, more uh, sort of, it, so it says increased um, incidence of multiple gestations. So basically like more, um, more uh, fetuses growing inside of you. Um, a small placenta or other anatomical abnormalities of the placenta that may be associated with early twin loss. Um, so in that case, like if the placenta is, I think, abnormally small, then obviously that means that there's less, uh, there's less flow of nutrients and whatnot mm. to the twins, which means there's less, uh, that there's, it needs to be shared, which means that if one of them has fewer resources uh, than the other one, then they're less likely to survive. Um, so uh, there's also genetic factors and then also factors that happen just in the womb um, as the fetus is growing. Um, but what they found is that the abnormalities that cause vanishing twin syndrome, that cause one of the fetuses to disappear, is you, they're usually there from the start um, rather than um, sort of something that happens during pregnancy. So it's less likely for something to happen during pregnancy, which then causes... Um, that one of the one of the fetuses to sort of disappear. Usually, it's something that is present from the very beginning, uh, and so this is where we get to what happens to the vanishing twins. So there are a number of different things that could happen. Um, so the first one is resorption, which is kind of what which is kind of what you were talking about. Mm. Uh, so resorption can you can basically uh, be absorbed. It can basically kind of be absorbed into the other sort of uh, the other fetus um, or into sort of basically be broken down back into the mother's body sort of thing, mm. you know? Um, and it's, it's, it's very weird and interesting, right? Like it doesn't seem like it should make sense. Like one living thing should be able to just absorb another, but, but they're just, like, it's just cells. It's uh, just some uh, cells. Uh, yeah. For some, at some points. So resorption can happen um, as early as seven weeks or as late as 12 weeks into the pregnancy. Um, obviously when I say, when I say resorption, I don't want you picturing a full, a full fetus that's like they're basically ready to pop, yeah. just being absorbed back into the uterus or being merged into the other mm. twin. Like this is stuff that generally happens sort of early in the pregnancy. And also, if uh, if the sort of gestational sac just resorbs, 
that it usually happens without affecting the the other twin which is why if a vanishing twin uh, a vanishing twin happens early in the pregnancy mm. then it's l the, the other twin is l like more likely to be fine because you know um it it just doesn't really affect them there's no there's no harm done uh to them um and also there's there's no issue with resources or any anything like that um but yeah, there's there's just always like really there's generally just really really good chances of survival of the other twin when um the fetus is resorbed. Can I just check it? The resorbs is happening. It's not being resorbed back into the mother. It's being resorbed into the other fetus. Both can happen. Both can happen. Okay. Yeah, both fine. can happen. Yeah. Um. It. it yeah. It, it doesn't really. It. It. What I'm reading here it doesn't really differentiate. But both. Both are certainly possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh. So, I mean, that can actually also happen. Um. In non-twin pregnancies. You know, um, so if you actually look up uh, resorption uterus on Google, uh, you will you, you can you, you basically find out about fetal uh, resorption, which doesn't necessarily uh, need to go into a, another baby. Yeah. Can, ah. yeah. exactly. Uh, and then um, there's also blighted ovum, which is uh, basically a problem with inside the gestational sac. Uh, the fetus, the, so the embryo cannot be sort of seen, so. It would kind of um, it would appear to be sort of a vanishing fetus, mm, yeah. but actually, it turns out that it was just a, a, a pregnancy without an embryo, essentially. So, it, so you have the gestational sac, yeah. but there isn't a there isn't a viable right. embryo there, wow. uh, and so it would appear because you could see the gestational sac on, on ultrasound. Remember, yeah. between four point five to five weeks. Yeah. Uh, so if you do a, if you do a five week scan and you can see a gestational sac, you're like, okay, there's two gestational sacs two uh, fetuses but then you look later and actually it turns out that one of them just wasn't sort of viable mm. but there was there was an embryo in there at some point it hasn't just like another gestational sac has appeared i don't i mean i don't know what all these things are necessarily but a gestational sac has, has formed around an embryo which then did not carry mm. on growing so the, the gestational sac doesn't need to form around or the, the gestational sac has just formed and there's no there never was a second embryo yeah so it's the second one Really? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why does it form then? Not really sure, to be honest. I mean, I think. Uh, I mean, but that doesn't happen in like when there isn't a twin. People don't just get a gestational sac out of nowhere, do they? I, I think you Maybe. can. I mean, we spoke about. I mean, we spoke about uh, hysterical pregnancies. Yeah. Uh, gosh, was that two weeks ago? Three weeks ago? A couple of weeks ago? Yeah. Um. So I think we spoke a little bit about this then. I don't think we would have used the terms gestational sac and mm. gestational sac and whatnot. But um, yeah, no, like you. I think that would, if that were to happen without another twin, that would probably just be a hysterical pregnancy. Right. Or a phantom right. pregnancy, rather. Yeah. Right? Whereas in this case, this is what's interesting about um, the sort of vanishing twin syndrome when I was looking into it. It really seems to be, uh, here are just the normal problems that happen with pregnancy sometimes. But with twins. But with yeah. twins, and it only affects one. Right. Right? Right. Okay. So that's that's what I mean. Sorry, I, as I said, I researched this. Um, a, a, a while, while ago. ago. So I'm, I'm reminding myself as I'm going through my notes. Um, also, I hit my head a while ago and I'm concussed. No, someone else hit your head. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's it wasn't true. your fault. I totally forgot. Well, mm, you're very accusatory language. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It wasn't my fault. So there's also fetus papyraceus. Fetus papyraceus. That's how it is. Papyraceus. Mm, yeah. P A P Y R A C E O U S. Um,. And this one is uh, wild. It's uh, it's kind of like a mummified fetus uh, that's uh, like or like you know squashed or whatever um, that's associated with the other uh, viable fetus. It's incredibly, incredibly rare. Like it, it's not common at all. Um, but essentially, uh, one fetus flattens the other against uh, sort of between the membranes mm. um, and the uterine wall, so it just gets kind of squashed. Um, and it usually happens very, very early in the second uh, trimester. Like the other the sort of other fetus is just sort of killed by the viable fetus. And this, this is the one that's most like murder, I think, you know, yeah. like it's one like accidentally, like one fetus just full on like, Baby you know, slaughter. I'm pro-choice and it's my choice to abort you, brother. <laughs> Just Blimey. squashing them up against the wall. Because this happens quite early, it could result in complete resorption, but um, it could uh, it could like affect the other twin potentially um, because it might not be resorbed properly, and then it could become kind of complications mm. uh, with both of the twins. Um, and what's what's interesting about this one is that you can just you can see it on ultrasound, obviously, right? Because because the other sack is squashed up against the yeah, wall. Yeah, you can you can physically see mm. what is going on in ultrasound. Um and yeah, so 
the, a fa- a- apparently also a vanishing twin could also be linked to um a, 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 like a number of fetal malformations in the surviving twin um but they don't know exactly how that works so in in this mm. case it, you could there could be issues with the surviving twin yeah but they they don't know how or why um, and there's no, and just generally as we move on to treatment, there's no special treatment or care necessary um, when there's like, uh, like when there's no complications. Because again, a, a vanishing twin could just result in no complications. Like you know, it, it, it essentially could be um, a miscarriage uh, with a viable um, with a viable fetus still mm-hmm. left over. Um, but if you, like, as I said, if you've got sort of the vaginal pain and the bleeding and all of that sort of stuff, not the vaginal pain, the the bleeding um, or and the pelvic pain. Uh, then you you'll be sort of monitored, um, and you know you'll um, you'll get sort of medical care for that. But if a twin complicates a pregnancy during the second or third trimester, then that would could then be mo- like sort of marked as a high risk pregnancy, which are treated sort of quite differently. Um, and then yeah, you just get you as I said before, you just get monitored a lot more closely. Um, and as, as, in terms of complications, like. It's it's tough because there are, there are a lot of different ones like cerebral palsy um, and uh, like a, a sort of premature labor. A, a lot of other things can sort of happen. But vanishing twin syndrome is one of those things that is very it's very annoying to talk about um, sort of specifically, kind of like hysterical pregnancy because it's not exactly one thing. Yeah, yeah. it's it's just an outcome. It's the phenomenon of checking your ultrasound yeah. and one twin has vanished. Exactly, with yeah. f- loads of different causes. Exactly, yeah. it's like yeah. if I was to if if we were to do an episode on uh, diarrhea and I had to list out all of the potential causes of that, and <laughs> you love comparing things that are observed that have different causes to diarrhea <laughs> because it's a perfect example. It wor- it's a yeah, perfect it example, and everyone understands it. Or- very awkward. Uh, sentences sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely, but I Vanishing very much. Twins <laughs> are like diarrhea, or my favorite of your ones that you've said is, "Gay being gay is much like having diarrhea." Yeah, yeah. being gay in that is it has a multiple causes, and not a disease. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, God, it's just so uncomfortable to hear you say that. Yes, but if you make a provocative analogy, people you get will remember it, and then you yeah. can educate them. Well, yeah, but people will remember it, yeah, right? Like yeah. you know, yeah. um, if if you're if you know if you remember if you're thinking about this sort of thing, you think, oh yeah, diarrhea. Boom. Amazing. Some people use provocative language in order to uh, capture your attention so that they can gain for themselves. Corey does it to get your attention so he can educate you. Yeah. For your benefit. (laughs) I do this for you. (laughs) Gays often have diarrhea because they have to dish. Oh, my God. (laughs) Which is another cause for the symptom. There you go. Being gay could cause diarrhea. I don't have a response to that. I would Carry it? on. Yeah, these are the these be... are the kinds of things that usually <laughs> you would that would just slip past. Like you yeah. know, we're yeah. talking about yeah. you know something like some deep metaphysical concept. Yeah. Mm, I wonder okay. if it is classed as diarrhea because if I just shove a hose up my ass, that's not a cause for diarrhea. Yeah, diarrhea is loose, watery, and possibly more frequent bowel movements. I guess it is diarrhea. So yeah, I suppose if you add water to any poo, yeah. it becomes but that's, diarrhea. By that logic, then drinking so much water that you get diarrhea. Is it, is, do you get diarrhea from drinking lots of water? Yeah, mm. probably. Oh no, you pee a lot. You just pee a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You drink a lot that's of water and then um and then eat something that makes your body think I need to get rid of all this quick because that's that, I think when I was taught about what diarrhea was I don't know how we've gone from twins to diarrhea but um okay. when I was taught about you, what diarrhea you made the segue no I didn't <laughs> when I, when uh, when, <laughs> when uh, I was taught about what diarrhea was um I was taught that oh it is just your body deciding. I may have been poisoned or something bad is happening. I need to get rid of as I need to get rid of the entire contents of the bowel just as quickly as possible. Right. So I think kind of in your small intestine, I think this is the last one. I don't know. Um basically in your intestines, instead of like sort of sitting in there for a bit and all the water being drawn out, yeah. mm. um, it just evacuates as, as quickly right. as possible. So the so the water is not drawn out of the stool, so the stool is loose and watery. Right. Yeah. There you go. So clever. It's very clever. It's very, oh, very. Which obvious. is wh- which is why diarrhea is so common. Because yes. if you think about it, yeah. Whenever your body is thinking, I um uh, something is not right, it, it's just like okay, go get out. The there we go. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Because it's a good tactic. I mean, it's evolutionarily speaking, it's a fantastic tactic. Yeah. You know, it's the same way that vomiting is a oh, fantastic. Yeah. How good is vomiting? Honestly, look, before we digest that, let's get it out. Yeah, let's talk about vomiting for a second, because vomiting is wonderful, right? Like, think about it. You you ingest something that is going to kill you. Yeah. And your body says, no, 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 no. No, no, no. no. It's out now. It just 
Pull the, the eject lever. As soon as it's as soon as it starts, as soon as you start to feel like not okay, yeah. your body's your body's like because you ever thought so the about difference between vomiting and diarrhea is basically how long it takes the body to detect it. Yeah, or, or, or what's triggering it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you know, if you've got a stomach bug, your your body's like, well, there's clearly something yeah. in here that it's some bad. So just shed Get rid it. of all of it. It's great. And what I what I think is really it's a it's, privileged position to be in. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Great. But some animals can't vomit, like rats, for example, can't vomit, and so they need oh, to, poor like, um, behaviorally, yeah. be very different from us. Like we can be a little bit more blasé about what we eat, whereas rats, oh, they're very like they get in, they make sure they're very specific about their food. They take a tiny nibble, yeah. um, and they can be very, very picky because they, if they don't have a food, if you don't, if you have sort of fancy rats like yeah. pet rats, and you don't feed them a lot of different foods when they're younger. They are hesitant to try new foods when they're older because they'll just resort to eating safe foods because they know they're safe. Also, I'm pretty sure that they often have one rat that eats that, that they have is that they have it's a sort of test food. Oh no! I, the I, king's I food think, tester. I think I've I think I've heard that where they've got a rat test like a rat will test something like the runt. Um, wow! And, and that's why rat poison needs to be slow acting. Yeah, that's definitely the bottom of the chain, isn't it? Yeah, it's like ant poison. The ant poison is poison that doesn't kill the ant that eats it. It po kills it when it gets back to the hive yeah. or the nest. Yeah, right. So clever. Oh, it's fantastic. Honestly, I mean, it's horrible. Horrible. But, but I mean, the the um yeah. the like the, the the biological mechanisms at play are just fantastic. Yeah. I think. So back to the sort of vanishing uh vanishing twin syndrome. As I said, there are plenty of uh complications because ultimately. You know, um, I mean, obviously, if it happens at a certain point, there are fewer complications. If it happens later, there are a lot more complications because, um, you know, there's a it's sharing space with the other fetus. Mm. And it also might be symptomatic of a thing that will affect the other one. Exactly. And there are a lot of different things that can cause vanishing twin syndrome, obviously. So there's going to be a lot of different uh, kinds of complications. And realistically, if we're going to if we're going to talk about um, if we're going to talk about all the different kinds of complications, we need to talk about all the different um, things that can result in a uh, vanishing twin syndrome. But mm. I think, honestly, if you think of it really as um, more akin to a, a miscarriage, but with but with more than one fetus I I present, right? right? So you just miscarry one of the, of the fetuses, which then obviously could result in complications later on. But, um, but, yeah, but uh, often, you know, as I said, if it happens early, then there aren't gonna be many complications. But another interesting outcome of this is uh, chimeras. So you know what a chimera is? Combination of two organisms. Yeah, so a chimera, uh, genetically speaking, uh, so this is from Britannica, chimera in genetics, an organism or tissue that contains at least two different sets of DNA, most often originating from the fusion of as many different of uh, many different zygotes, uh, fertilized eggs. So in this case, um, you can have chimeras due to resorption. So if you've got fraternal twins, ah. um, and one of them absorbs the other twin, um, I say resorption, really it would be, I guess it'd be absorption in... Yeah. Um, in when it comes to the fetuses but if one of them absorbs the other twin mm. then you can have a, a one organism with multiple uh with multiple sets of dna um in it it's very interesting why wow. does that not result in um the immune system attacking those parts of the body i don't know off the top of my head one would assume because the immune system is trained is trained on those like by as in by exposure to all of by exposure, it. yeah because yeah. it's there from i suppose because your immune system is you've got an innate immune system but you've also got an, a sort of adaptive immune system and i suppose mm. if it's there from uh from so early like before mm. birth mm. then the immune system doesn't recognize it as foreign yeah i suppose and that would be my assumption yeah, but that's a fantastic question. Yeah, it's quite an easy thing to select for for the immune system because if you if you if you do that, everything you do it to will die. Yeah, and so the ones in which it, you don't do that are selected for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So um, we've got I've got a couple stories here about chimeras. Look, you were uh, you were hinting at knowing one at some point. Yeah. So I just have this vague memory of I think a TV show um, about. Uh, identical twins, I think, or, mm -hmm. or I think it might be about conjoined twins, actually. Um, and basically, there was something where if if uh, you have twins and one is absorbed by the other one uh, during pregnancy, then it can sort of live on and sort of be sort of attached to you, but it's not an it's not a whole um, it's not a whole formed uh, baby, but you can have like I don't know, even so much as like a face or something. Uh, so. Yeah. There was a teenager in India. So this was published in 2019. This is from uh, Live Science or Live Science. There's a teenager in India who find, they found a uh, bones, teeth, and a, I quote, hairy, cheesy material um, in her abdomen. Um, and 
Yes. This is this I is something called fetus in fetu or like a fetus in fetu, like a fetus in a fetus in situ. Mm. Um, essentially, the what happened is it was a kind of vanishing twin situation, but she had absorbed, uh, she had sort of absorbed the uh, the other twin, um, and it kind of kind of grew inside mm. of her. Mm-hmm. So uh, essentially. Gosh, it was her twin just growing there in her abdomen. She was 17 years old. Um, it's a, the the case the case study was uh, published in uh, August uh, the uh, in August I think uh, 2019, uh, the 12th of August. Uh, but they did a CT scan on her and they found that there was just this mass in her abdomen that they couldn't really explain explain. But it there were multiple bones. Um, it looked like vertebrae, ribs, and long bones. And um, apparently, this affects a one in 500,000 people worldwide. Which wow. can you figure out how many people that is? Uh, about oh. fourteen. Yeah, fifty, maybe sixteen now. Between yeah, fourteen to sixteen people. Wow, yeah. mad, right? And it, it's it's very very uncommon, but you know they could do uh, almost do a football team, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. That'd be. A, I mean, that would the ratings of that would be amazing, right? Mm. But I mean, easy marketing. I suppose they'd app, they'd look mostly normal. Uh, yeah, right. maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Was there not? Um, were there not people like I thought there was a girl who had like eight limbs or or something where like some of the limbs were not genetically her limbs or something oh, like that. I mean, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is there. There's plenty of these cases. I've got another one for you just after this, but this one was um, this was was really, 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 really interesting. Um, but apparently, two hundred cases of fetus in fetu have been reported in the medical literature, but um. Only seven were in people uh, ages fifteen or older, um, and yeah, it, it, it again they don't really know what causes it. It's kind of like parasitic twins. It's also technically would be a sort of vanishing twin syndrome, which is why I'm bringing it up here because this is something that is almost always brought up when you talk mm. about vanishing twin syndrome. Just you know the fact that you can absorb another twin and it can live on inside of you. Uh, but when they took out the mass, it was the size of a full term baby. It's fourteen by sixteen inches by four inches so about 36 by 16 by 10 centimeters and here's a quote and was composed of a hairy cheese material multiple teeth and structures resembling limb buds oh. it also contained skin hair f- and fat tissue um it was alive no it wasn't alive okay no no it wasn't like a living baby oh i thought it had just carried on sort of growing no no it was no, no. part of her kids. body right right yeah it was just part of, it was like it, those all existed as but they were in in her body like in her abdomen but were the cells yeah. alive i mean yeah. Okay. But like, I, okay. I, I, as far as I'm aware, the cells were, um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. The cells were alive. Uh, yeah. So the cells are alive, but when they're not like alive, um, as part of their sort of own organism, it's like kind of yeah. a parasitic. Yeah. 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 Sorry. It's just, it's very, not. Yeah. There's no. There's no problem with you asking the question. Yeah. It's just asking, is it alive? Is a very difficult question to answer because. What does alive mean, man? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. it's just like because like there, there's examples of like um, I, th- I remember watching a documentary about a girl or two girls, depending on how you describe it, um, where they they had like um, a pretty much standard body but two heads, mm-hmm. and they're two separate people um, with two separate brains, but they can kind of tell as far as I remember, they can kind of tell what each other are looking at to mm-hmm. a certain extent, and they share like a circulatory system, and they're two people. Um, but obviously, neither one of them could survive mm-hmm. um, without the entire body, and so, like, yeah, that's what I mean by uh, was it alive? In that it was, it was li- linked into the circulatory system. It was linked in. It was getting nutrients, all that kind of stuff. But it wasn't a thing of its own. Yeah. So if it was, so in this case, if it wasn't um, alive, sorry, that's why I was, I was just struggling to understand what you were asking. If it wasn't alive, uh, it would probably be calcified. Um, right. Which is this really interesting. So, oh God, this is so cool how bodies work, man. Um, if you have something like that in your body um, that is like harmful to it, it will abe- your body can sort of calcify it, well, which is, is essentially just Locking build stone away. around it. Yeah, yeah. It just builds right. stone around the th- yeah. uh, like. And I say stone, I mean like it's it's yeah. minerals. So yeah. it, it's quite literally like stone yeah. around whatever it is, and you've just got a stony mass lump inside of you. Yeah. So no, this was actually this 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 fetus was not like that. It wasn't sort of calcified. It was actually uh, connected into blood vessels. They actually had to leave some of the tissue in her because it was so. Tightly connected yeah, to the blood vessels that it would it, it would they, they wouldn't be able to remove it without um without hurting her yeah. and this is problematic because apparently it could become cancerous because it is it is um I, I don't know if it was a genetically identical twin but um it is a, it is a twin um it, it is a sort of sibling but it is kind of this 
it is just this tissue that isn't sort of sort of supposed to be present in your body. It is a sort of mass. It could continue sort of growing on its own. You don't really know what's kind of going on with it. It it could be a worry sort of mm. thing, right? Um, and that is that is that one, you know, with the with the seventeen year old girl in India. I'll do that again. Sorry. And that is that one with the seventeen year old girl in India. But there is another one which um, <laughs> is a much funnier story, which you might have heard about. It involves um, an unborn twin. Um, <laughs> Inside the other twin, we, okay, cucking. We, we've talked um, about this. Yeah, cucking, uh, cucking a man. What? Cuckolding a man. What is? So, what, I don't actually know. You know what cuckolding is? No. Okay, so we've in, talked about this before. Have we? Yeah, we have. Oh, okay. Yes. Cuckolding or this? Cuckolding. Okay. I think both actually. Fantastic. So in this case, um, what happened was a man uh, had a son, and they did it. They did a paternity test. Uh, because you know, um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and they is did a paternity test. Is a a man who lets another man sleep with their partner? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and okay. in in this case, they did a paternity <laughs> test, and I they get, only showed ten percent of the kid's DNA. Yeah. And you know, looking at it, the man was the kid's uncle. Yeah. But it, so he had his brother's balls. But <laughs> there were. This isn't crazy. This was crazy. Um, inside of his uh, inside of his sort of testicles, there was some tissue from the absorbed twins, um, which then started producing sperm cells. Brilliant. Um, which was like, which was, it's ridiculous. I think there are some other, <laughs> there are some other parts of his body which also include the sort of the twin DNA, but it's incredibly, incredibly uncommon and. It's even more uncommon because it's germ cells, right? Yeah. This is this is it's your reproductive yeah. cells. So that's 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 crazy. So like, like how does that affect how you feel as a person? If you if you um, it's you made this kid, yeah, genetically speaking. But it's your brother's balls. It's you? not your kid, but it, you say it's your brother's, right? But yeah. your brother is you. Like yeah. you've, you know what I mean, the, the, your brother is not a this you're is this hypothetical brother. person. You're both. Yeah, how do you make sense of that? Because like all the parts of your your body is designed to pass on your genes. Mm. And so it's there. It's like, I literally can't. Jeez. <laughs> I oh. can't do it. My genes are not my genes. What? So there's a mix. So oh, they say it's likely a mix. And okay. also, I mean, it, it happens on his skin as well. Like the twin skin is slightly dark, it's slightly lighter than his, mm. and his is slightly darker, I think. So he's kind of got a, a slight striping pattern on his skin. Ooh. It's this really interesting, it's just this really, really interesting case wherein how does, is that, how do you feel? Because obviously the kid is your kid. If you've raised the kid and yeah. you made the kid, it's just the, you know, you were cucked by your unborn it's brother just, that you absorbed. It's just very funny when you look at it genetically. I mean, he gets the last yeah. laugh, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but like, yeah, genetically speaking, it's not, it's like, it's your nephew. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like you, you know what I mean? Like you, you yeah. made it. You did all the work, yeah. right? It's just that but it's you just so weird happens. about it. You might feel weird about it and that would be justified. You know, no, yeah. no, justifiable <laughs> feeling weird, but you've done all of the work to make the, the same amount of work that you, you do to make the kid. It's just that the cells that you've grown in your body yeah. are some of them are slightly different from most of the other cells in your body. Yeah. Which is... It's the same... It, I guess it's the same... It's a similar experience to having... To, like, being an adopted parent. It's like... Uh, you, do you know what I mean? I mean, I, I guess, yeah. But, I mean, I, I, it's that one... It's, it's so... It, it's I'm so sure much it's less not, removed yeah, from, yeah. you know... Um, from, you know, being a biological parent. Because in this case, you, you've you done... there. There's nothing that you've done that is remotely different. Yeah. It, yeah, it's not even like you know. It's and it is still technically your your DNA. It is just not most of your. It's but not it's the not, same DNA as most of the rest of your body. The the parts of your body that are mo are creating the motivational forces to look after this child as opposed to any other child are doing it in order to propagate their own DNA. Yeah, and 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 they can't. <laughs> it's such an interesting thing where like life is just life is made for this one purpose and a different thing is happening. Um. And, it, and it, obviously on a human level, it doesn't matter, but on a genetic level, it's weird. Yeah. And also, but also kind of wonderful that this um, fetus that didn't make it to uh, being a person, nevertheless, achieved the thing that being a person is about, which yeah. is making another person. Oh my God, it's fantastic. Yeah, you're so right. But it just skipped, it just jumped to <laughs> generations. I think that it, I think it brings up questions of uh, identity. So not yeah. just identity, but it's ownership of, of body. Because yeah. we are sitting here talking about, oh, this is not, like we see DNA as being the defining characteristic of a person, but this this person has multiple sets of DNA in it, in him. And what we're doing is saying, oh, but that's his unborn twin's DNA, as though it, yeah, as though it isn't his. Because we're identified yeah. with our DNA, yeah. But, but it's so it's it's so odd to me because I mean, it, 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 it then the next step from that is obviously we see the our sort of gut biota, the 
the the microorganisms that exist in our gut that are almost necessary to our survival and also have have effects on how we like how we survive yeah. um we see all of that as being very very separate from us and like it's i'm clear. in a relationship with my gut my biome oh <laughs> it's not me I'm, we're friends yeah we're friends and we help how each other long? out true but then but then it's one step closer and it's very clear that the, the defining the sort of defining line is the way that we the way that we differentiate is dna mm. yeah that, like what is me is dna even though you know it like it it doesn't make sense to do that to to draw that distinction when you've not known for your entire life that you have had DNA in you that it is not yours. And why is it not yours? You grew it, you know. You you have supported it through your whole life. Yeah, it's well, not but, like your brother ever existed. Yeah. But if it's it, it's if your DNA is speaking, when your DNA says me, yeah, it means itself. Because uh, your DNA is saying me through the medium of you, because your DNA made you. <laughs> yeah, but your DNA isn't saying me. Do you know what I mean? But it is. Because mm, you are an expression of your DNA. So anything you no, express part, is an expression, part of, your expression of your DNA. And then there's also all of the other factors that affect yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. No, you I know? know. It's I just know. I just think it's I just think it's really interesting for drawing out this weird little thing that humans have wherein we think that um we think that we are we because yeah. of the DNA. What but it's just it, I don't know. I think it's interesting the way that they, they talk about it being it's it's his brother's it's his brother's child. It's his brother's DNA inside of him. It's not his tissue. It's his brother's tissue. He produced it. Exactly. Yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like if I got a heart transplant, it'd be my heart. It's, it's mine. It's your, my heart. Your new heart. I paid for it. I took it from that small child <laughs> and I kept it by... <laughs> Do you have any siblings? Yes, I have a brother. He lives in my scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> that is... That's a worrying... That's, I had a brother. It's a very worrying response. <laughs> well, I had a brother, but now he lives in my scrotum. No, well, he always response. lived in your scrotum. Yeah. Well, no. At one point, he lived in the womb with oh, me. Oh, yeah, next to you. And then yeah. you absorbed him and placed him in your scrotum. Yeah, so I used to have this I used to have this uh, guy living next door to me, but he was a real he was a real pain in, pain in the balls, and yeah. that's where he is now. <laughs> yeah. Now he is a literal pain in my balls. How does that work? Well, I think that is, uh, that is probably about it for the vanishing twin syndrome episode i do just have to ask a quick question for you oh yeah you ready for a quick fire quiz <gasps> i dun, forgot dun, dun, dun. magician edition what because vanishing, is vanishing that's twins. so <laughs> bringing it back to the top tenuous link if we ever do anything about the science of magic you're well we don't know the cause it could be tiny little fetus magicians still jab's not wrong okay uh, I thought you were a scientist. Okay. <laughs> no, it could be. Okay. I'm not saying it is. Okay. <laughs> it probably isn't, but it could be. Okay. So no, I'll never. remind you of that reasoning next time I say anything vaguely dubious. <laughs> oh, so you don't like it when I use it back on you? So. <laughs> <laughs> not when you don't let me use it. <laughs> <laughs> so the rules of the quick for our quiz have not changed. I will ask one question. That is one question between the two of you. The first person to buzz in with the correct answer after finished asking the question wins. What do they win, Jam? Nothing. Like the... No. Twins who are left over. Don't do. Oh, dear. oh they win life. <laughs> oh, they get a whole. Yeah, they get a whole life. I guess sometimes. Well, the winner of this quick fire quiz can have a whole life. Luke, what is your buzzer? Ooh, champ! What is your buzzer? <laughs> is, is the pause at the beginning? No, it's, just the. Oh, no, you just cut the pause out. That's okay. a very weird buzzer, champ. But okay. But my, no, my buzzer is. <clears throat> so my no. question for you both is: If you buzz that, you won't be allowed to. In pregnancies questions. with three or more gestational sacs, what percentage results in vanishing twins? Is Ooh. the is the pause at the beginning? Luke, uh, oh. yeah. I paused Luke. throughout the question, champ. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, but that's part of your buzzer. So you answered before. You buzzed in before the question was done. Oh my gosh. Okay, who wants to answer this? Ooh, Luke, you can answer it. Thirty. Two percent. No. Oof. Jamp. Thirty-six percent. No. <gasps> no. 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 Three or more gestational sacs. Jamp. Twenty percent. Ooh. Thirty-five percent. Fifty percent. Jesus Christ. Okay, you both lose that. Forty percent. <laughs> yeah. So no. So the numbers. The numbers here are. Um. So for uh pregnancies that have three or more gestational sacs, uh, that's fifty percent. For twin pregnancies, it's thirty six percent. And for assisted reproductive technique test pregnancies, that's twenty two thirty percent. We are bad. Yeah, it's very bad. But that is not all. We need to thank all of our new patrons. And if you would like to be thanked at the end of next month's episode, you could join our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash sci guys at any tier and be thanked at the end of the next Patreon vote episode. So first to thank is Sophie Freyer. Thank you. Thank you to Harper Fair. Thank you, JD. Thank you, Chase Windsor. Thank you to Rowan. Thank you, Alicia Sisson. 
Thank you, Levi Licinius Paliorus. What a great name. That's a wow. fantastic name. Yeah, that's a spell. Thank you, too, Lizzie J. Thank you, Ashley Wawan. Thank you, Charlotte Nilsson. Thank you, too, Emily Ackroyd. Thank you, Julie Brown. Thank you, Geordie Heracles. And thank you, too, Sarah Asher. Legends. Oh, fantastic. All of you, legends. A little round of applause for these patents, I think. Well, thank you very much. As I said, there's plenty over on our Patreon. You can get little, you can get little uh, bonus clips. You can get bonus episodes. You can get our brand new show. I keep calling it a brand new show, but it's been going for a good few months now. Sci Guys After Dark, which is a lot mm. like this, but a lot more ph- philosophical. Yeah. Uh, all of the other things. It's basically our rambly chats off episode. Uh, we just decided to film them, uh, and we made it a podcast. It's great. I feel rambly chats is doing it a disservice. I think we 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 come into uh, the episode with like a, a thing we want to talk about, and then we yeah. go on a meandering discussion, and at the end we sum it all up uh, as this is this is the overarching theme or thing we've learned or thing we talked about um, in that episode. It's You're really right. good fun. I, I, I understand. It's like Joe Rogan, yeah. but good. Yeah. So before <laughs> we go, we would like to thank all of our patrons with a very special thank you to executive producer Rosa Rodriguez and hey. Danito, and thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode down in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday, and why not leave us a nice wee comment? You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys, or find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and here on YouTube, and at SciGuys on TikTok too. Or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. That's SciGuysPod at gmail.com. SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCore everywhere. You can follow me at Champion everywhere. You can follow me at Luke Cutforth everywhere. Goodbye. Oh, bye. Time for you to leave. To vanish. Whew.